this thing on? Okay, let's talk about J-Meter. Now, I know that the title of this presentation says that the J-Meter is broken. It doesn't mean that there was some broken version of it released and it broke all the tests all at once suddenly. No, it's, it's not the case. I want to talk to, with you about the scalability of a tool and the scalability of your productivity when you're testing your application. So these are very important topics. The way you work with the tool and the way you use it to deliver any value from your performance test, this is actually the most important part. And if the tool is slowing you down, there is something wrong, right? So um, I want to talk to, to you about the few problems that I had myself with that, and maybe we can solve these somehow. One of the problems that I had to test at the large scale was the way JMeter handles distributed testing. And I'm gonna show you why. You have this master node that is connected to the remote servers. Remote servers are, are ready, like once they are spin up, they are ready to accept any test that is given. So the master node prepares this JMX file that it reads from your disk, and it sends them to the remote servers for the test execution, right? Once all the remote servers accept those files and then send the signal back that they are ready to execute a test, the master node sends out a signal to start the test. So the remote servers, they prepare the request and hit their application. Each of the requests ends up being a sample, a sample result. So remote servers, they assert your responses and they end up being either successful or not. They take the measurements and all of these samplers are being sent back to the master node. Of course, there is some batching there, but in general, the master node accepts them all and writes them to a single file. If you have more advanced setup, you may be even using InfluxDB for these aggregations, right? Um, the problem with this setup is the communication between the master node and the remote servers, this happens over the RMI protocol, and it's not compressed anyhow, and it easily becomes a bottleneck. So if you had a problem that you were adding up machines, adding up remote servers, and hold a single master node to manage them, chances are you were actually hitting a bottleneck on this area. Another thing is the test data management. If you have a big project, if you have to handle lots and lots of data, uh, and if you have more than one machine, you have hit some problems probably affiliated with that, especially if you want to have like unique data hit uh, concurrently, right? So if you want to avoid uh, concurrency problems, if you want to avoid some, some locking problems in certain accounts, or you know, make sure that your servers and your load generators use unique accounts uh, at all times, the only way right now to, to work around this is to have a, even if you have a CSV data file, you have to split it into small chunks and send them directly to the remote servers. This poses a few problems. For example, if you want to run you know, your tests on some increased number of servers, you still have to have a dynamic way of splitting those files and allocating them between your servers. Like this becomes a bottleneck of your workload, right? You have to still be prepared to actually maintain the number of data and to distribute them between the uh, remote servers. So that's a bit problematic. And this really wastes your time. Another key thing is the reporting in Gmeter. I know, I know these reports, they are looking good. They are comprehensive to some extent. They show you what's wrong with the application. The problem is they are almost always constrained to your own PC, right? There is no easy way to embed them anywhere. There is no, no way to, to share them properly. And if you want to go back a few reports, it is going to be a mess, right? Uh, all in all, you have to pay attention to where you store them. You have to have some, some unified way to, to report on them. So they are very useful, but only for a single test run. I would not advise anyone to use them actually on their, any like production setup. And especially if you want to share it with any management or stakeholders, That's this, this is fine for a single report. And if you want to run your tests over the pipeline, this is not the way you would handle that.
Next part is a trend. So when you're running your test often, you want to see the change of behavior of your application over time or between the versions. With JMeter in a standard setup, that's there's no way you're going to have that. So, and the worst thing you can do is to copy over this data to your Excel sheet and have it somewhere. Right? This is just pure waste of time of yours and everyone else, because then looking it up, you know, you have to open up those sheets, you have to manage this data somehow uh, to effectively compare the test results between the test runs. That's, so based on that, like the trends analysis, using JMeter only is simply not possible. If you spend more time on maintaining and configuring your tests rather than actually testing your application, there is something wrong. And the best practices should help you with creating and planning a good test up ahead. So this comes down to the few items I have listed. Uh, first of them is the parameterization. You want your test to be as parameterized as possible because you don't want to have a separate test scripts for different scenarios. The test scenarios, they should be somewhere else. They should be defined as a runtime variables rather than actually be embedded in your test script. This should let you change your test scenarios if you want to add more users, if you want to uh, generate some more load against your application. This should be really a one-time action and one click for you to have your productivity increase. Another part is to have a modular and reusable test. This is also very important because if you have some change in the logic in the application and you have to cover that in your test, you would only do it once. And this is the same principle as in coding, is that you don't have to repeat yourself. Because if you do, chances are, there, if the changes are coming, you would fail to update them everywhere. And that's the same problem as any other code would have. And the other part is to have actually code reviews of your test. What many testers fail to note that the, your tests, they are actually code. They are executed by some heavy machines and this code has to be clear, this has to be understandable, this has to be maintainable, and also your peers would use that. So you want to make sure that your peers actually understand this code and uh, can execute them on the fly. Now the last piece of the puzzle is the web application test development. And JMeter has done an awful job at this over time. And the way it works in JMeter is when you have a browser and it hits your application, JMeter sets up the proxy server and each of the calls gets recorded and send is sent back to JMeter engine. Now, the problem is when you try to replay this traffic, it is not going to work the first time because internally the browser has to handle all the cookies, it has to handle all the information you've put in the uh, forms, it has to run some JavaScript on the backend to actually maintain your session because the HTTP protocol itself is stateless and you need to provide some unique values and some values that were probably returned before by the server and you need to handle this correlation. Like over years, there was no way to actually do any meaningful automated correlation in JMeter. And this has been rightfully called out as the worst application for this testing. It was possible, but it was very time consuming to actually replicate the action that your browser has executed. But um, I was looking at the options that are available for JMeter. And it turns out last year, Blaze Meter has released a game changer for the JMeter correlation uh, handling. Uh, the way it works is kind of similar to the load runners. So you have your transaction controller, you can name your steps on the fly. So as you record them on the screen, you can actually put the prefix, suffix for the transaction names. Uh, and it actually determines whether to create a new transaction for you or not. Uh, later, once you have recorded your session, it is capable of generating the suggestions for the extractions of the parameters. Uh, 
And this is like very similar to the ones that we have seen in the load runner recording, right? Um, I've tried it once on a single page and the results that I have, uh, I have been given were actually pretty good. And uh, I'm surprised that this has not been broadly propagated yet. Uh, so uh, if you do have a chance and if you struggle with correlated correlations in the JMeter engine, maybe it's the way for you to actually work like more mm, proficient. So before we actually declare it doomed, maybe there is a chance to fix that and overcome those issues. Um, I've put up a chart or set of requirements that are actually needed by a performance engineer. So what's the, the minimum, the bare minimum of, of tools and, and actions you require to do your job properly. And um, it starts with a proper test execution. I need to execute the test fast. And I need a test report every time I run a test, right? These tests have to be easily configurable and um, I need to see those reporting live, right? This is a determination, a determinant of the, um, of my own productivity. And it's best if the test reports, they are somewhat integrated with my APM because I can see exactly then drill down during the test execution, what is happening from the end user perspective. And this is my first pillar for performance engineering productivity. Once I have those functionalities assured, I can work on integration of my tests in the CI CD, uh, I need some data analysis module. I'm gonna work on a lots of data, so I want to be able to access this data fast and I want to make decisions out of it. Um, I want to be able to report, to, to compare the reports. Uh, like if, if I have a one bad test result, one good test result, I wanna see what has changed, what happened over time. And I want to make some trends out of my reports, right? So I want to see this dynamically uh, uh, developing with the application. So that's the second pillar of my productivity. And the third pillar, I'm not sure we're actually gonna get there, uh, but it's, you know, we have this lots of data, we have lots of charts, we have produced you know, gigabytes of test reports, uh, this is a good ground to run some AI and machine learning on top of that. And these are the three pillars of productivity. Now, to achieve it all, I'm gonna need some work done. And this means I'm gonna have to build something over JMeter using it only as a engine that I'm gonna execute the test from. Uh, so I've prepared some short draft of the architecture of how it's going to look like. First part, it's the uh, Jenkins. I'm going to use it for instrumentation and rolling out servers. If I need four, I'm going to have four. If I need three, it's going to be three. And each of the servers is going to act as its own load generator, right? It's going to act independently. I'm going to have to manage them myself. So I'm going to pull the test configuration and the test scripts straight from the Git client that I'm gonna have. Um, each of these, the, the servers is gonna generate its own JDA file, so it's not gonna be aggregated by the master node. Instead, I'm gonna have its own, like the, the server uh, store its own JDA file, and then I'm gonna go ag aggregate and distribute it later, right? So each of these is gonna produce its own uh, sampler st statistics, and it's gonna be forwarded directly to Grafana Loki and Apache Spark. Uh, on top of that, I need some tracing generated from the load generator. It's not mandatory, but I want to explore and I want to make use of the latest technologies and latest standards to see how we can actually leverage these during the test execution, right? So I want to speed up my analysis and my root cause. If I see something wrong on the test level, if I see something wrong in the test report, I want to go directly to the application to the point where I see exactly what went wrong, what was the delay uh, that has slowed down the end users. So um, we're going to have the Grafana Loki, we're going to have the Spark, 
and the open telemetry. Uh, so Grafana Loki and open telemetry, they will be good for a execution of a single test. So I want to see exactly how this test has behaved, right? And this is where I want a deep insights and deep analysis of problems I'm going to see on the on the system. And this is very important because, you know, this is my time that I'm going to spend on actually analyzing and troubleshooting uh, certain tests. This is also going to be the most expensive storage-wise because I'm going to have to actually store all the samples and, you know, sort of make up the, the analysis on the spot. Uh, but these modules will help me to actually drill down into the smallest problems I can find during the test execution. Apache Spark will be used to aggregate this data and to persist it on a database. So I'm going to have some statistics, I'm going to have some trends and some machine learning. They will be persisted on a database level, right? So then I, if, if I want to, for example, have a trend line of the test results, I don't have to aggregate all the GTL files at once or all the samplers from the InfluxDB. Instead, I'm just going to have a single module that's going to run those once per test and I'm just going to store it on a database. This way, I can run my trend analysis way back in between the versions, and it's not going to be problematic. So these will land into database. My tool of choice for the presentation layer will be Grafana. Uh, so, and this is what we have seen already, pre me presenting the LGTM stuff. So this is exactly the dashboard we're going to be building in the near future. Loki is going to send the logs to Grafana. I'm going to have some traces from Open Telemetry, and if we combine them together, I hope you to get a tool that can help me troubleshoot hundreds of services at once, and I can drill down from the big picture of what happens during the test, how the service has behaved in the past, and how is it right now. So I want to be able to jump between those pictures from the big picture of what the service looked like in the past and up until what has happened with this particular call, and I want to see that inside the application. Um, this is going to be a journey. So if you think that there is something I'm missing here right now, uh, now it's a good time to put a comment there. Maybe I've, I've, I've missed something. Um, if you're interested into some technical details, I'm sure happy to share them. Uh, if you have some ideas, also put them there somewhere in um, here. Um, and yeah, that's a start. So if you are still here, thank you for watching. And I really appreciate any feedback that you could give. So maybe your experiences, you know, share your problems you're facing. I may be able to help you. Uh, just drop a comment here or contact me on LinkedIn um, here. Thanks.